telling the story because I love to do it. I mean, really. Um, so, um, and when uh, my mother, we had taken home, we emigrated here from England, and we got to Canada and we drove across country, and we were now living in Los Angeles, and my mother didn't know anybody, and it was totally by accident that we ended up getting in the business at all. And um, we had met these two people, Bill Lockwood and Frank Weika, and they ran a drama school, and Bill was the, the singer, and, and we, we learned how to do little show tunes and things like that. And they ended up, I ended up running the South Coast Rep, they were going to the South Coast Rep. Um, anyway, we've been doing cows, we've been we've been doing all these things. So my mother says to me, well, this is just like Frank and Bill, I mean, it's true. Well, this seemed perfectly normal to me. I mean, it didn't seem like there was anything wrong with that, you know. So it was really, I, I so impressed with my mother. <laughs> the movie was, um, those were the times, oh dear. <coughs> those were the times when, um, I was raised Catholic, and they would have, they condemned to this. And uh, the Children's Hour, of course, got the big X rating and saw the condemned. So, at the premium, we weren't allowed to go to see <laughs> the movie. So they took us to the Grand Derby, and uh, that's where we, um, we were taken. And then the next day, my mother took us to see the movie. So, <laughs> so really, it was great. James Garner, God, he was so handsome. He was just, he was a lovely person. I mean, years later, my dad was a, an art director, set designer, and an art director. And years later, he got to the show. So, he mentioned that he had gone and taken me to the set because they felt like one of them needed to be there because of the like, subject. He was lovely. He had a charisma, right? Yes, he did. And movies yes, did. like you, movies and TV. Hmm. Yeah, which was a rarity. Um, that didn't happen that often. No, he went, he went from movies back to TV again. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, wasn't he nominated for an Oscar or something? Oh, yes. Murphy's 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 So, and, and, and he won in. So, he was like one of the few. There used to be a real stigma about doing television there for people that had done that near movies as well. And um, now there is no sting whatsoever. Anybody can do anything. So it's really come a long way. It's very cool. All right, now I know the Mank audience is always having lots of questions. This is the first year you let me ask one. Thank you so much. But I know there's lots on your mind. So we'll go to you now. And I'll try to get to everybody when you raise your hand. I kind of scan the room pretty well usually. So anybody want to get started and ask either or both? Yes, right away. Hi, my name is Jack from the National Capital Region of Television. And my question was this if you could put one piece of your work into a museum, go to you, that says this represents you, whether you're a toddler or a joke or just something, what would you want to put in the museum to be really very about that you love and to see that represents you? Well, it's kind of hard. That's a good question. All of them. <laughs> 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 all of them. <laughs> because it's impossible to sound immodest to it. But I'd love to hear your answer. <laughs> Excuse me. Because she has so many. Well, it's weird because, I mean, I think in a weird sort of way, I mean, I sort of, by doing stuff when I was younger, I sort of ended up being lucky enough to be able to end up where I am now. I, mean, I think I would like two pieces in there, please. <laughs> and, um, well, I had the coach from the Children's Hour, so I could sort of put that into the, the museum. Um, um, and, you know, I, sort of iconic, I guess, is able put something on there. I guess. But I, you know, it was the right stuff. Oh, I love the right stuff. That is such a sort of patriotic, classic, such a beautiful movie. I, it was an anniversary recently of that movie. And um, to see it again, it so holds up. It is so, 
Oh my gosh, the energy of that movie is just so wonderful. So, and, then, and I think it'd be great to have something in front of it. Because it's sort of a eclipse. It's all of, I mean, the little astronaut program and everything. So, and I have three pieces. <laughs> I'll sound like a real smart aleck, but I'll say none of it. <laughs> now, I, I guess uh, the ones I'm asked the most about are Newhart, but partially because my parents were still alive and they could see a show that didn't have four letter words. And, uh, I did base him on the blog from Manhattan. I'm crazy. I played Larry in a, a movie called Savage Weekend, I and mean, he was part of my grandfather. Two shirts in the middle of the summer, you know, <laughs> just a little bit. But uh, one woman asked me over in Beverly Hills one time, when are you going to do some comedy? And my friend at the bar said, he's still with one now. Haven't you seen your part? And she said, oh, they're just weird. <laughs> Speaking of weird, I guess the other one is Blade Runner because it became a cult classic, someone said, and I got to play something other than a redneck hillbilly. <laughs> and he's a genius type. And I said, whether the audience gets it or not, I looked at the little boy they brought to Disneyland with, uh, he looked 50 years old, he was only 12, 14, walked on the balls of his feet, and then Einstein, you know, I can't even play chess. And he was a champion, my character was a champion chess player. That's a long time to try to ask your great, answer your great questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeff, you have a question. This to hear your answer. <laughs> um, well, actually, I have been, I, I still see Tepi a lot. We do, um, and of course she has that great Jamal that she raises yeah. money for. Um, but Tippy was, uh, well, just the whole experience of doing the birds, I think, was really a great thing. Uh, Tippy has always been incredibly gracious and sweet, and uh, she's a lovely, her interpretation of what her experience was with Mr. Hitchcock is entirely different to what mine is, but I was 12, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, so, um, but Tippy is just, she's a lovely lady, and I, she so is so passionate about her um, uh, Shambhala, and so, I, I, you know, it's a true cause for Try to answer about, about the experience, sir? Yeah. Uh, well, I was lucky enough to do a show for HBO called Deadwood uh, several years before. <laughs> and I'm lucky again to be in every show, so I s struggled in to meet another great creator of the show, Alan Ball, Academy Award winner writer, and I thought, oh, this is going to be great. And I met him and I did get through the audition. We talked about bigotry, and I said, well, it doesn't matter because bigots don't think they're bigots. And he said, right, right, right. I think I got a shot. <laughs> but every year I do less episodes. And uh, in the book, he lasted through many books, but he never had much to do. But I love playing the sheriff, and uh, he's a self-repeating old bore, but I kept the money. <laughs> brought me back really changed from the author Charlene Harris's original concept and put an Obama mask on me and killed me in the story of my life but uh, uh, something just flew out. What just flew out? You love working on the show. I know. <laughs> and I don't know who to talk up to here. But I did love the 
having to show all the wonderful young actors from all over the world, Stephen Moyer and Sars Guard from Sweden, I guess, and Anna Packman. And I went to a party she had in Santa Monica. Sharon O'Bounce for she ran up and kissed me on the cheek, even though know, I was an, an old boy. So, <laughs> this is Joy. Many are called, but few are chosen. <laughs>
and um, they asked me, and one of the questions was, did you have a mentor when you were 13 years old? And so I wrote on there, well, I was doing the birds when I was 13 years old, and since he, he was a mentor to me, I mean, he, he was really great. So that's my story. <laughs>
Can I take one quick try to answer your question? Uh, uh, actors, maybe not a her stature, but a lot of my peers will try to find some pathos or something sympathetic about the character, no matter how evil it is sometimes. Have you ever seen that? You try to, yeah. And uh, maybe he was attempting to slip something in that surprised you, right? But that's the that Rutger that was. So, well, he, I guess he had us in but I just I wish he had been a little more thoughtful to Rutter. I just can't quite forget. You think it was personal? <laughs> Yes, sir, I got you. Speaking of deaths, uh, I remember back in 1990, you were in the John Frankenheimer in Andersonville. Yes. I was an expert at that as a civil war reaction. And I had a participant for a few weeks with that, and I remember you were pretty much a character in that. Thank you. And you were one of the, one of the guys who tanked there. And I just wondered if you had any memory or anything. I have very good about that. Uh, I don't worry about that scene as much as I get some of the others, but we have wonderful reenactors volunteering, catching pneumonia, sleeping out at night. We had a lot of volunteers. Uh, she brought back the story about cardboard cutouts. We didn't have enough extras. And that's why I said to John Franklin, I maybe a little place to smoke. We were to have smoke. <laughs> Day, but yeah, I love the man John Frankenheimer, and I ran up and said I could do this scene better, and because uh, I, I knew I could, and we think we can, and we think we can fly. But I ran up to him, and he said, I said I want to do it with you. That's all you can ask for another shot. <laughs> yes, sir, I see you all the way in the back there. Thank you. Uh, this question is for uh, Veronica Cartwright. Um, you know, I, I'm glad, so glad you mentioned uh, the rights uh, where you're, you were Betty Riss and you married, you married Gus, and he's in the, portrayed in the movie as a very broken and damaged individual. And you're in this pressure cooker situation where he may not come home from work one day because of the nature of his job. But you also were the mom in Flight of the Navigator where you lose your son for a number of years, and then through the magic of traveling at the speed of light, he appears in the spaceship years later. And as an actress, you're dealing with this, with this lost child now, another damaged male, and, and, and thus, how do you approach that sort of situation where you're kind of trying to smooth everything over, but it's almost too much for, for a person to handle? a lost child or, or a husband who may die in a, in a rocket? Well, The Flight of the Navigator was, of course, a fictional character. Um, our, one thing that we, we found um, interesting was that when we did Flight of the Navigator and he disappears, they had us looking Ancient. I mean, they made us just look so bedraggled. And so, I mean, I, I actually questioned at the time, after eight years, would we sort of have tried to get our act together somewhat so that when he does arrive, I mean, I don't know, they, they wanted us to just look like we had lost all hope, I guess, and, and, you know. You know, but Betty Grissom was, I mean, she was a, a real person. Yeah. And um, she totally believed in Gus, and they had these children. And what happened to Gus Grissom, and it's true, it was proven that he never did, he did not pop that uh, explosive patch. It was the first time that it had ever 
but then it used on the ship. And even when the guy says, we dropped it from a mile. Well, I mean, how many miles were they out in space? The pressure, once it hit the ground, exploded. Now, yes, he had all that stuff with him, but it was pretty. There was never any burn marks on his hands. There was nothing like that. And they treated him, because this was a very, very expensive piece of equipment, like he was a fault. That's why they didn't make a big deal about it. And she was just destroyed. She built up. She, they, these women who struck by these men, they, they were as strong as the astronauts were. It was an incredible burden to put on these people. And they were just treated like, well, oh, we're over here, and you've got to have this, I mean, and, and she wanted to meet Jackie. Yeah. That, that's what she, and That was an amazing was scene. Saying, that was an that incredible is, scene. That is totally taken away from her. Mm -hmm. And she suffered just as much as he had. And of course, he becomes extremely defensive. And um, in real life, he died inside of that capsule, um, trying to, because the fire broke out. And it was proven that they had known about this equipment was hitting a certain temperature. And he died trying to undo it with a ratchet where there had been an explosive hatch. And that's how he died. And it, it's just, I, I just find it incredible. I mean, a lot of us, uh, we got to meet our characters. I didn't get to meet Betty because Betty was still in the wrong suit, so she unfortunately became a alcoholic. And it basically destroyed her life. And um, that's horrible. It was a lot different than like, a mother whose son has been in the sky with Pete Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> So that was a bit different. And, and of course, it was a children's movie, and I think it's, it was a wonderful movie for kids. I think it's just incredible. But I also think that the right stuff is an incredible piece of history, and I think every child of, you know, 11, 12 years old should see this movie. It is just, it's a piece of Americana that just has an idol thing. It is sort of recreated. So. Thank you. Yes, the young lady right there. Uh, for Mr. Sanderson, uh, I love hearing the Tennessee accent on TV, especially when the character is from Vermont. <laughs> 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 and, and I wonder if that was a choice that you as an actor were allowed to make or if they, if they wanted something like that. Well, Bob Newhart said that they could have migrated from Appalachia. <laughs> 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 they have wood chucks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>